So I've been kind of going through my paperwork, uh, kind of uploading stuff. And I mentioned in the last video that I uploaded it about uh, how GSOC are ignoring me. I have several complaints now. They're just basically ignoring me. Warford Council are ignoring me. Um, there's a variety of kind of state employed organizations ignoring me because of the kind of because I'm trying to out this corruption basically. But I spoke about how a letter was sent to Waterford Garda Station regarding one of my complaints. This is the letter that was sent right to Waterford Garda Station. I'll just give you some kind of background on this, right? And it was posted down, sorry, and it was posted in this envelope. The Waterford Garda Station on the 27th of the 2nd, 2023, right? And it, it was regarding a complaint, basically. Basically saying that, that there was no action going to be taken against the garden and basically covered up for the garden, being honest with you. And uh, they held the letter up in the garden Station. They asked me why you got the Waterford Garda Station, because the letter is addressed to me, as you can probably see anyway. Like, right? But this was sent to Waterford Garda Station, right? And they held the letter for three weeks. And then it was put into this envelope. This is the letter. Then it was put into this envelope. Sorry. This letter is dated the 22nd of the 3rd, uh, 2023. This was put into this envelope and then sent down to me. So obviously whoever read the letter then, obviously had this forwarded on to me. But they never meant to post down the original kind of envelope. Because the original envelope had the date on it. So that's basically what happened. They held the letter for uh, nearly three weeks. I had 28 days to appeal the complaint. And they held the letter for 20 days on water for garden barracks. And then they posted it down into this. So this envelope was crumpled up and thrown into this and forwarded on because someone in Waterford Garda Station needed to see if their action going to be taken against the guard, against the detective that I had made a complaint about. So that gives you some kind of insight into what's going on. I'm complaining about an employee in Waterford Tussle and her corruption basically where they, they more or less kind of labelled me kind of as a fucking paedophile I've been honest, to try and discredit me. And when you think about it, like you have that guard of McCabe uh, of the last couple of years, the same thing, Tusley again, two workers in Tusley supposedly wrongly released information uh, that employed that he was a paedophile and that was two different workers and I'm more or less kind of like uh, claiming the same thing of again of a Tusley HSC employee, do you know what I mean? So that's three, on tr that's three different occasions, like, do you know what I mean? So obviously this is something that's going on within Tusley, do you know what I mean? And they're turning a blind eye to this kind of fucking nasty stuff and uh, Helen McEntee like she's aware of my issues with GSOC. She has told me herself that GSOC answered to no one. And I'm supposed to make a complaint about GSOC now to GSOC. They're obviously going to find in their own fucking in favour of themselves. Like I've been, re I've been seeking some kind of legal assistance. For years now I've been looking for legal assistance to bring a case in front of a judge. Because uh, like it's unrealistic for me to go through a due process of GSOC complaints like you have the you have a solicitor that was involved in my case she got caught red-handed corrupting my case right and when they went to look into my case then she deleted my file she had five years to retain my file she deleted my file and then um, then someone hacked my emails and they deleted all my emails I couldn't prove that the five years wasn't up but then I got into Google Cloud and I got back some of my emails and she was at the right me email saying that the five years was up she was after deleting my file uh, that alone in itself would kind of would be a red flag, would it not? That why would this list or feel the need to delete somebody's file? But anyway, yeah, I got my emails back, and my emails, sure enough, not my emails, her emails sent to me showed the dates. So she got caught red handed because the dates showed that the five years was in fact not up. Just as I had said, the five years was not up, and for whatever reason, she had deleted my file. Now, this documentation is all there. All that documentation is there and everything. And the LSRA, who is the Law Society, uh, they basically cover for that they were genuinely looking into the, to the complaint originally. And whatever happened in halfway through the year, they, were just, they just went cold. Now, this is the same with GSOC. This is the same with Waterford City Council. This is the same with a, kind of, a number of kind of state-employed kind of organisations. And I think Helen McEntee, like she's all for kind of like uh, advocating like to make legal aid more accessible to the citizens of Ireland. Like I'm years trying to like push this into the mainstream. Like I've asked to just speak to a solicitor, a state solicitor, I want to provide so I can put my case forward. Like and you can't facilitate that. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you work for the citizens of Ireland. Do you know what I mean?
So it makes no sense that you can advocate that while at the same time like constantly try to send me back with into the same system that you know I've been through and that you know have corrupted me case. Are you complicit to this? Like you know GSOC have apologised. I've sent you the letter where they've apologised for apparently mixing up me complaints. I've sent it, even in my last video I showed that I've been writing constantly to them. They've, they've ignored me last I think six uh, emails, letters. Well, so what they're doing is they're waiting for the statute limitations to run down on complaints and then they'll get back to this is what's going on and that water for Tussle employee miss Anne carry would i be saying this person's name realistically if there was no truth in what i'm saying this woman is beyond corrupt she's a doctor employed by the hsc she recruiting for the religion that she recruits for the bahoy religion i unfortunately got mixed up with all that and i don't want to get into detail because it sounds kind of it does sound crazy and they're trying to kind of gaslight me as it is but if this woman needs to be investigated do you know what I mean she should not be employed by our health service 100% and as I said there's documentations about all this woman's actions you know what I mean but they won't take the documentations they won't look into it just the same as the solicitor there's documentation like it's not even my documentation her documentation she's saying that the five years was up and then my emails were after been hacked so she knew what kind of emails were after been hacked let's be honest about it and this goes for what of her counsel as well the water for council are ignoring me like i've spoken about how two members of water city council got caught searching my mother's bedroom roisin darty leo kennedy they got their actions covered up by joe daniels all because his association with uh, certain members of Sinn fein now this goes for certain people in water for you know what i mean that whole kind of children's group link a lot of that stuff is covered up because their association with kind of members of kind of Sinn fein we're all aware of kind of that that was run by kind of Mary Halligan, even though they promote that it was founded by Mary Halligan. She is the co-founder, co-founder, do you know what I mean? And it might mean much to Mary Halligan that she can go around telling people that she's the founder. But it means a lot to the other person, do you know what I mean? The other person who is the co-founder. But her brother is ex-minister, ex-mayor John Halligan. And his relationship with David Conan, do you know what I mean? Of Sinn Féin, their very close relationship has time and time again been an issue regarding this from his brother Henry Halligan passing private emails back to David Cullinan to some of the girls that wanted to come forward regarding the abuse up in children's group link being threatened by allegedly IRA. Then you have Ray Halligan, brother of John Halligan, caught on video trying to pass a threat through me uh, to one of the girls after been reading me private messages but this is on video so on me tiktok went to my very first video on tiktok and the guardy wouldn't take the complaint they wouldn't even look into it they tried to say that i'd be charged if they were looking into it so i agreed to be charged i said okay that's fine and then they said there's no evidence now you can look at the video it's on me tiktok and you can see him walking over and you can see in the mirror look at the mirror in the car you see me putting his hand on my door trying to get into the car do you know what i mean now that was me and the other way around do you know what I mean? I'd be fucking charged and dragged before the court, or any of the rest of us would. But these are the benefits of having an ex-mayor as a fucking brother, do you know what I mean, or an ex-minister. But these people are not above the law. And Mr. Conan, spokesperson, health spokesperson for Sinn Féin, he's aware of my issue with fucking water for Tussle. Do you know what I mean? From 2016 when I sent him private emails, he's aware. And so is Mary Lou MacDonald is also aware of my issues with Mr. Conlan. All those emails are also still available. But Mr. Conan is very selective at what he likes to talk about publicly in case it kind of infringes on his relationship with John Halligan. There needs to be an inquiry into all of this when you think about it. It's as simple as that. There just needs to be an inquiry into it. Now we have me ex there now in a couple of weeks bringing me to court for another bullshit safety order. Uh, despite me not ringing her, not texting her, I don't have any contact. She lodged this on, on a, the, my daughter's birthday in September and I'm up in court now in January. Yeah, that just shows the character of this person. And I'm going to show more documentation and speak about kind of actions of this person. You can make your own mind up. Like the safety order before that was lodged on my mother-in-law's birthday. And it was served on my mother-in-law in her address, even though it was like farm me under a different address. So this is the kind of stuff that Waterford Garrity are doing in an effort to try and cause as much trouble as they can and protect their own actions. So like, as I said, all this documentation and all this information, it's all already available. It's not just allegations by me. So it needs to be looked into. And like, and if Miss McEntee has any kind of integrity for our job, she needs to be pushing for an inquiry into this to distance herself from the corruption, what's going on. So yeah, I'll leave it there, I suppose. Thanks.